Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, I know I've been missing for the last fortnight, unfortunately, the everyday life and ill health caught up with me. And as you can see, I'm suffering the after effects of ill health. I've got breakout spots and I don't particularly look that good. So, um, going from this to the next step of it all is going to be interesting to say the least. Uh, if you want to see how I manage it, please carry on watching and it's good to be back with you all. Right, because I do have breakouts, I am going to start to cover them and I'm going to use the Estee Lauder to Disappear uh, Foundation Concealer. And I'm going to be putting that on with a soft sponged applicator so that I'm not actually touching my face with my fingers and spreading any infection to anywhere else when I'm passing in concealer of a different colour. So put this on the back of my hand. Right, so just a little bit. You really do not need a lot because it is very, very thick and it goes a long way. Yes, it seems a little bit darker than my natural skin tone, but that's for a reason. Keep watching. And I'm going to start and dab it in on the places that are most affected, such as my chin. Like so. As you can see, it's covering quite well. And I'm just patting. I'm not swiping like this because that would take the product off. I'm gently dabbing it in and then I can spread it using the sponge when I've covered the bit that I want to cover like so. And this one here I think is going to be a right monkey to cover. So here it goes. And yes it does hurt. Unfortunately, it's not a nice one, but sod's law, being female and all that, we get these things. And actually that's not too bad. It's covered quite well. I'm going to put some more on. Oh, there we go. Because I'm not actually on the area, I can rub it. But on that, I just want to dab. So I'm not taking the product off that I've just put on. And one here on my lip. Again, gently dab. And spread it around. Oh, there it is. Like so. And... When I've got over that, I can spread it out better using the applicator. A little bit here. There's one here on my forehead. Yes, I've had a right horrible time of it all recently. So, need a little bit more of this. Just the tiniest of touch. And the back of my hand to cover and gently dab it. Like so. And I've got a little red mark there that I can cover. Oh, there you go. You, you might not look perfect. You know, I know I look silly because I've just got concealer on. But once I've got foundation on and I've got everything else on, it's going to look fine. Um, I'm going to clean this sponge for the next step. And I'm going to use uh, the Cold B Makeup Brush Cleansing Wipes. And it cleans all types of makeup brushes and tools. And just take one of them out because I don't want to infect my palette with the different coloured concealers in. 
goes, well, it's not nice and it's unhygienic, un un to be honest. So, get rid of that. I'm not going to use that. It's fallen apart. But hey, that's life. These things happen. I've actually got some different ones here to use that I can show you when I find them. Mm, I did have. Not a lot of extra stories about this. Right, I'm just going to use a little round makeup sponge for the next step and a concealer brush. So, again, everything. This is a no name, no brand concealer kit that I got from. I think it was eBay or somewhere like that. It's got every colour that I could ever need for concealer in it. I'm going to start with the green and put a little bit over the areas where I have redness. So using a flat brush, I find these better. I'm going to just go in and get some of that on my brush, like so. And just again dab it on because if you swipe and rub you are going to take off the concealer that you've put down first like so a uh, little bit here and this is purely to counteract any redness that's in my skin. Um, I'm using my sponge dry. I find it better. And just gently, like so, over my skin. And I'm just, as you can see, gently dabbing it in. Add if I need to in certain areas. We've got there, here, and here. They're going to be awkward spots. Like so. Now, there we go. And I'm also going to use the Sheer Cover Conceal and Brighten Trio. Uh, this is what, that's what it looks like. It's well loved, well used. I recommend it to anybody who's like me. Very, very pale skinned and can't find um, foundation to match. And just load my brush up as so. And go over those areas like so, adding it well on. Nice. Right. Gonna come back to the next step, so bear with me. Well, as you can see, I'm well covered with uh, concealer. I've done under my eyes and uh, um. I do look really silly because I've used a cream 
concealer rather than a powder what I'm going to do is go over where I've put the cream on with a powdered concealer before I put my foundation on just so that it doesn't crease and it doesn't go muddy and I'm just using the Real Technique setting brush I like this I can get to all the places I need to so just gently circular motions and start to buff it in as you can see it's very very pale because if I used anything darker than it's there even in the summer I'd look silly because I am so pale I actually don't tan very well. I burn more than I tan and it's not nice. Again, um, I peel, I blister, I just look a hell of a mess. So as you can see, there, I'm looking a bit better than I was. Um, obviously I've still got the rest of my face to do using this concealer. Uh, I got it from eBay. Uh, I couldn't tell you who it's by. I, I just use, oh, well I'll give it a go and see what it's like. Um, it's not as good as my sheer cover but it does for what I'm doing. This. and under my eyes and when I've done this I will give this brush a bloody good clean because I don't want to spread any infection to when I next do my face and okay I can't afford to get ill because I don't have an immune system and that's a story not for today so if you want to know leave a comment and I'll post a link to why I don't have said immune system right hopefully you can see the difference I mean that one there I don't think looks half as bad as it did that one you can't see same with these you can't see them um, that one there's gone and same with that one there that's gone right I'm going to go on under my eyes with some banana powder by Ben Nye and set contour um, not contour concealer even you don't need a lot it does go a long way and I like this because it takes out a lot of the darkness I have under my eyes like so it helps a lot when I've got my foundation on you can hardly see any darkness under my eyes at all and I'm just using that same brush there's no point in washing it to reuse it because it's going to take a hell of a long time to dry in between and frankly it doesn't do them good to be dried with a hair dryer yes they're synthetic but I think it spoils the brushes there I'm happy with that, that doesn't look bad at all right next step right next step using a Real Techniques buffing brush I'm going to put some foundation on and again I'm using the sheer cover by Guthy Renka you must and I can't stress this enough you must tap the excess off and I mean really really tap it otherwise it will go everywhere because it is so fine I like to start at the middle of my face where I've got the most redness so I recommend you start on the outside I don't like that I think it goes cakey on me it might be different on you 
so you try and see what works for you this is just what I like so start on here and work out like so and really really work well in and I'm using circular buffing moments and I'm movements going over my ears down my neck like so otherwise if I sweep like so even though I've set that concealer all into place there's a risk of it muddying on my face and just not looking at all attractive and that's not what today is all about right. over my eyes like so and it does cover a hell of a lot of imperfections and make sure you really go under the, the nose. That one place I find a lot of people forget about. And it's not attractive to have a different colour bottom of the nose to the rest of the face. Um, there we are. Making sure that's well and truly buffed in. And as you can see, now, my face matches my neck and my chest. There's the light diffusing particles in that foundation. Right. Just making sure it's well and truly booked in. Like so. So, remember what I started with? And I looked a right pig's ear of I don't know what to this. I think I look a lot better. So I'm going to go and put one eye on off camera and then get back to you. Won't be long. Well, as you can see, I'm back. I've got one eye on. And if you carry on watching, I'll show you how to do the other eye. I'm going to start with the MUA palette called Undress Me Too. And I'm going to take the lightest colour in the palette to cover the whole of my eye with and it's this one I will write it down in the description box for you when I upload the video I can't see the name on the back of it but it's this top right as you look at it and I'm going to take that colour all over my eye and I'm going to put it on a f um, sorry Looking a racket, I know. On my eyes, and I find it. Um, I've lost it, trust me. Um, there it is. No, it's not. Yes, there it is. It's a uh, no name fluffy brush. You can use it for putting a, a base on, you can use it for blending, it's absolutely brilliant. Again, I think I got them from eBay, a couple of pounds, but they do the job. And the colour that I'm actually putting all over my eyelid is very, very similar to my, natu my natural colour, my skin tone. So it won't do anything, but it just sets any cream products on my eye in place like so and I'm covering my eye well with it and I don't care if I get any under my eye because that actually will help when I do the underneath colour as well there right next step on a flat shade brush I'm going to take the colour um, 
creature and I'm going to put that all over my eye and that's in the Makeup Revolution London Ultra Eyeshadows palette and it's um, Mermaids Forever. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love this palette. 32 absolutely stunning um, colours. I hope you can see that. And I'm using the colour Creature. Right, right, right way around. And it's that one. That second from the top here. And I'm going to put that all over my eye, including in my socket line as the transition colour. It's very, very pale and beautiful. And I'm using quite a small flat brush to do this with, so I can get as much colour payoff as possible. And just putting it everywhere, in the socket as well. So. Right, from the same palette, on a different brush, I'm using a uh, uh, Urban Decay Flat Eyeshadow Brush. I'm going to put the colour Starfish, which is the third one down, on the first half, this inner half of my eye here. And I'm using gentle packing moment movements. Moments? What am I talking about? Because again, I want as much of that colour on my eye as possible. And I'm going to build it up to the colour I want. Excuse me. Oh, I hate that one. That happens you get eyeshadow in your eye, it's irritate. Mm. And keep building it up until it's how you want it to be. So it's an absolutely gorgeous orangey peachy colour for spring. And there we go. Now, on a different brush, all together, I'm going to take the colour Ariel, which is this bottom one, there, and it's like a pinky reddy orangey brown and I'm going to put that on the outer third of my eye and always always tap off the excess colour otherwise you're just going to get it all over your cheeks and it's not going to look attractive and again, just start, I start here on the outside and work in, just gentle movement, like so, and just gently start to build it. keep going until you have the desired effect now I do have rather a lot of eyelid space I really like my eyes because they're big 
and I can get a lot of colour on. Not everybody's as lucky as I am and please you do what you feel comfortable with. Now with a clean fluffy brush again no name eBay job couple of quid I'm going to blend this in so I've got no harsh lines and I'm just using gentle windscreen wiper movements backwards and forwards until like so otherwise it'd blow it out too much I'd end up with I should go here, all down here, and I'd look at my pig in a poke. So, okay, just in there, that inner corner. There. I'm quite happy with that. I do have some fallout, so what I'm going to do is the brush that I used by Real Techniques to put my powder concealer on I'm going to use just to buff off any colour eyeshadow that's fallen down like so and there gone after doing that I'm going to take the colour um, Moonlit Brown by Avon it's a glimmer stick I have heard people say they've gone back to testing on animals I uh, sent a tweet to Avon asking them and they tweeted me back to a direct link to say no they're not testing on animals anymore if they ha had it been they've stopped and they only test in countries where they have to which is required by law in England they don't have to they obviously know what they're doing they've been around for however long so please don't give me any crap for it because I like them. Right, I'm going to gently line my top, what, top of my eye, here, like so. Don't worry. Yes, it may look a bit. Ooh, what's she doing at the minute? But bear with me, and you'll find out. So. Now, I pull the funniest of faces, as I think most of us do when we're tight lining, but it's better than having white skin there. Now, gently give myself a little subtle wing. I don't want it too over the top because today isn't about that. It's all about being subtle and just gently joining them together. And I'm going to take the colour Mineral from the same palette by um, Emu Makeup Revolution on a smoky eyeshadow brush. It's basically a pencil brush like this. I hope you can see it. And I'm going to just gently smudge this out because at the moment it does look very, very harsh. So, start here on the outer edge and gently just smooth the eyeliner using the eyeshadow. And just tilt your brush to get in as you need to. I think so. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just to get in there. And that line there. Gently. Watch it. And underneath as well. Now, what I am going to do is use 
the colour I used on the outer edge as well under my eye. I haven't done that on the other eye because I've just thought about it whilst I've been blending this colour in. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that mineral to this eye underneath. Sorry about that, the camera stopped recording and carry on blending out like so. On my Real Techniques brush, I love this detail of brush for in a corner work. I'm going to just give it a rub to make sure it's clean. I can't remember if I did wipe it over before when I used it last. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to give it a rub over on the wipe that I've got to clean my brushes with. And there we go. Now. and it's a little bit damp so great it'll help the colour pay off of the colour aerial I'm going to put on under my eyes right so I hope you can see starting here I'm going to sweep it under my eye like so And the same the other side. Just a gentle swash of colour. I think sometimes you can play about with makeup. It doesn't have to be what people perceive it to be. You it's your face, your makeup, you do what you want, you wear it how you like. I mean, I could have done two completely different coloured eyes for it if I'd wanted to, but to be honest, I just can't be chewed today. Um, and this is a basic colour. And I'm going to add a little bit of that starfish colour as well under my eyes, just to ensure a really, really seamless blend of colours. So and that's it. And just smudge it up into my outer edge. Now you'll be able to see better with this eye what I've done. So I'll come closer for you to see and really smudge it in. So, and flick it up. Now with that same brush, I'm going to take the colour Future, which is a really pretty, it looks almost white, but it does have a reflex to it, and you'll see when I've put it on what it's like. And that's it there, that one. And just a little bit here. It's very, very subtle because it's daytime and I don't want a lot in that corner. Just a little bit, just to give it some colour and brightness. Like so. Right. Now, for mascara, because I've run out of brown mascara, I'm going to use the um, Clinique. It's their under eye mascara and it's a really tiny, tiny brush. Perfect for the summer because it doesn't put a lot of mascara onto your eyes. And bear with me, I do pull a very funny face. Well, get in at the roof. 
and wiggle and flick up and for your outer ones just use the tip like so and flick up and the same with your inner ones making sure they're well covered I don't like lashes I can't get away with lashes um, they're not something I wear on a regular basis as I say I really don't like them now same technique with underneath but please be careful otherwise you can get it everywhere and it's a bit of a job to tidy up and in and just wiggle gently and use the tip of your brush like so and over to the stain on the other side add a bit more like so you can see what I'm doing Right, that's that. Now for any fall of clean up. It's literally two seconds work. Back to my uh, setting brush. Like so. And there. Um, because it is warm and it's daytime, I'm not going to put um, brows on. I don't think this look needs them and it's just not me. But I am going to brush my brows out just to get rid of any powder like so. And I'm using a spoolie brush, also known as a spiral brush. Um, they go by various different names. I don't know what they are in your country, but I'm sure somebody will tell me. Um, because I'm not doing brows and I'm not using a product on my brows as such, all I'm going to do is set them in place with the Miss Sporty Just Clear Mascara. And that just puts them in place and makes them look that tidy for the day. And all you do is simple push them up, push them into place. Like so, like that. Just makes them look neater. There we are. We don't need a lot. Um, right, now for contour and blush. Um, I'm going to use Sheer Cover. These are the Sunkissed Bronzing Minerals and that's what they look like. And I'm going to take my Real Techniques Multitask Brush. It, this blends it in very well. And it just colour payoff for these is brilliant. Now, this is the duck face. <coughs> and under me here, very subtly, because I don't want too much as a harsh contour line. A bit more, a bit more, just to. Around here, because I have a horrible double chin. Blend down. If you blend up, it's gonna just muddy and look like you just literally got a brown splodge here and do nothing. So, <coughs> and the same on the other side. Duck face. Underneath, and round my forehead, and I'm blending it into my hairline, so you don't have 
the brown's hair. Oh my god. You see, on some ladies, where they've just literally just gone, la 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 and left it and not blended it in. So it's literally, oh, here is a rim of brown. And to be honest, I don't think it looks pretty. Um, I don't think anybody looks pretty with that. Now, <coughs> on a smudge brush um, by Mange, Mange, 865, I'm just, it's like a dawn brush. I'm going to use this and I'm going to use the darkest of the three colours here and I'm going to contour my nose. I don't have to, I just think it looks better and all I'm going to do, down like so, and then use um, the setting brush by Real Technique to brush it out with. So it just gives me, on this side, a gentle shadow down here. Again, the other side. Like so. And with the brush by Real Technique. Blend it away. So. There. There's no harsh lines whatsoever and it just all it does is it narrows you know I mean I have a small nose so I don't have to do this I just sometimes think it looks nice if you're going out to add that little bit extra glam now again I'm using that dark colour on the same dawn brush under my bottom lip here just there like that because it gives you the illusion of having a poutier bottom lip and it looks fuller but really blend it in otherwise you're just going to have a, a muddy line and you'll not look pretty there, like so now I can add a little bit more Choose to because I really want to have pouty lips. Yeah. But. Right. Next step, the final step, is I'm going to fill in my lips and I'm going to use Avon Glimmer Sticks in a rich ginger. It's a pretty a rich browny, goldy pinky colour that has reflex. So here goes. I'm not going to go too heavily on my lips with the colour because I want it to match in with my eyes and be subtle. Uh, Making sure my lips look even because my right side is higher than my left, so I have to kind of even them out when I fill them in the best I can. Otherwise, you can see the difference in shape. So hopefully 
that. Okay. And once I've done that, I'm going to go over them with Avon, a new lip restoring colour balm in nude. I don't know if you can still get these. I've had this a while. Um, you'll have to look on the website or ask your rep who will be able to tell you if you can or you can't. But it's, it's literally, it's got hardly any colour to it and it's just to give me a wash of gloss. So, just going to fill my lips in with it. Like so. There we are. Doesn't look too bad. I don't think so. I think I've got the mirror in the shot again. Uh. Now, there is a trick to stop your lipstick or balm or whatever it is you've got on from going all over your teeth. You take your you take your finger, you can take whatever finger you want, but it's generally easier to use your pointy finger and go like that. And as you can see, I've got lipstick colour on my finger, and that, if I hadn't have done, would have gone all over my lips and my teeth from my lips. And it's not a pretty, it's not at all pretty, I can tell you. I think we've all done it at some point in our years. Right. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed. Bye.